we are back. And the first thing to announce is the three absences. Absence is like this. Mm, yeah. Mm, three absences. We have Ken, Shibli. Oh, but Ken, you are here. You are here. Exchange. If Kamruzama is here, that means another one is not here. Who? Yeah, but you see here we have 11 students. If we have 11 students, Jahi. Oh, he's disconnect, uh, disconnected, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Saji, Atma. I mean, yeah, he was here. Uh, I, I, I have seen him. He was here. Okay. Mm, so, oh, I'll correct. We have two absences, uh, Ken and Shibley. Okay, so that's for this one. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And we were here. We wanted to take a look at this usage scenario of the Mental health care patient management system. Do um, have you have you read it by yourself and uh, tried to pick up some chats for it? Someone is talking. Okay, we'll see it together. For this scenario, we uh, it's a scenario of a nurse, Kate. She specializes in mental health care, and one of her re responsibility is to visit patients at home to check that their treatment is effective and that they are not suffering from medication side effects. It's like allergic or something like this. One day for home visits. Kate logs into the uh, system and uses it to print her schedule for uh, of home visits for that day, along with summary information about the patients to be visited. She requests that the records for these patients be uh, downloaded to her laptop. She is prompted to for her key phrase to encrypt the records on the laptop. You see here we describe her act. Um, yeah, her activities in detail and each step, yeah, step by step, we describe how she realizes, uh, yeah, how she realizes her job, uh, yeah, her tasks. One of the patients that she visits is Jim, who is being treated with medication for depression. Jim feels that the medication is helping him, but believes that it has the side effect of keeping him awake at night. Kate looks up, looks up Jim's record and is prompted to, for her key phrase to decrypt the record. She checks the drug prescribed and queries its side effects. Sleep, sleeplessness is a known side effect, so she notes the problem in Jim's record and suggests that he visits the clinic to have his medication changed. He agrees to he agrees so Kate enters a prompt to call him when she gets back to the clinic to make an appointment with a physician. She ends the consultation and the system re encrypts James record. After um, finishing her consultations, Kate returns to the clinic and uh, uploads 
the records of patients visited to the database. The system generates a core list for Kate of those patients who she has contact, she has to contact for follow up information and make clinic appointments. You see here, we have a very, very detailed scenario. And from this scenario, we have a general idea about Kate's job. And through this, we can, yeah, we can pick up some features of the system. For example, um, yeah, here, Kate has to log into the system. So normally we have our authentication, authentication to log on the log on to the system. And she has used the system to print her schedule. Also, she requires that the records of uh, four patients be downloaded to her laptop. Um, and yeah, late, uh, at last, she has uh, she has also uploaded some info. Yeah, here she has uploaded the records of patients visited. So you see here, she had some uh, activities like downloading and uploading of specified patient records to her laptop. Uh, here we um, she has some home visit scheduling, encryption and decryption of patient records on a mobile device record retrieval and modification you see she has modified the record on the record of jim as jim has yeah uh has noticed some side effects of a uh, medication also yeah with this example we know that kate she has the right to link with the drugs database that maintains side effect information and the system for core prompting. Here is this scenario and from this scenario we we have captured some hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Yeah, with this scenario, we have captured some features like the authentication, authentication by logging on to the system, downloading and uploading the of specified patient records to our laptop, home visit scheduling, encryption and decryption of patient records on a mobile device, record retrieval and modification, links with the JAX database that maintains side effect information and the system for call prompting. You see these, all these features can be, can, yeah, can be got from the scenario. Here is the scenario testing. Now we will see another method of testing, which is the performance testing. Um, part of the relief testing may involve testing the emergent properties of a system, such as performance and reliability. And once the system has been completely integrated, it is possible to test for emergent properties, such as performance and reliability, said by here. Performance tests have to be designed to ensure that the system can process its intended load. This usually involves running a series of tests where you increase the load until the system performance becomes unacceptable. Here, yeah, it relates to two notions we have talked about before. The first one is the unfunctional requirements, and the second one is the stress testing. 
for the performance testing. And tests should reflect the profile of use of the system. As with the other types of testing, performance testing is concerned or both with demonstrating that the system meets its requirements and discovering problems and defects in the system. To test whether performance requirements are being achieved, we may have to construct an operational profile. An operational profile is a set of tests that reflect the actual mix of work that will be handled by the system. And this, yeah, this type of testing has two function, yeah, two functions. The first one is performance tests usually involve planning a series of tests where the load is steadily increased until the system performance becomes unacceptable. Yeah, here, uh, it's just like what we have said, the stress testing. It tests the failure behavior of the system. Circumstances may arise through an unexpected combination of events where the load placed on the system exceeds the maximum anticipated load. And in these circumstances, it is important that system failure should not cause data corruption or unexpected loss of user services. Yeah, uh, stress testing checks that overloading the system causes it to fail thought rather than collapse under its load. So that's why we say here we have the, oh, uh, here we have the relationship with the stress testing. Um, yeah. And <laughs> this type of testing, performance testing, it stresses the system and may cause defects to come to light that would not normally be discovered. So with the performance testing, we will discover some defects more clearly. Although it can be argued that these defects are unlikely to cause system failures in normal usage, there may be unusual combinations of normal circumstances that the stress testing replicates. You see here, uh, stress testing, it is a form of performance testing where the system is deliberately overloaded to test its failure behavior. Um, yeah. As we have said, stress testing, it is important. It is particularly relevant to distributed systems based on a network of processors. These systems often exhibit severe degrade degradation when they are heavily loaded. The network becomes swapped with coordination data that the different processes must exchange. So the processes become slower and slower as they wait for the required data from other processes. Stress testing helps us discover when the degradation begins so that we can add checks to the system to reject transactions beyond that point. You see, that's why we say here, we, even with the performance testing, just testing is important. Mm, now, we are pass to the third stage of testing process which is the user testing. Do you remember the three states? We have the development testing, release testing, and the user testing. Here, for the user testing, 
User or customer testing is a stage in the testing process in which users or customers provide input and advice on system testing. In fact, in this stage, we may involve formally testing a system that has been commissioned from an external supplier or could be an informal process where users experiment with a new software product to see if they like it and that it does what they need. Now you see it is the user testing. And user testing is essential. Even when comprehensive system and release testing have been carried out. The reason for this is that inferences from the user's working environment have a major effect on the reliability, performance, usability, and robustness of a system. This cannot be replicated in our testing environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you see for user testing, it's different from development testing or release testing. With user testing, we test the system directly with the environment of, uh, um, yeah, and the, the environment of end users. Um, in fact, it is uh, practically impossible for a system developer to replicate the system's working environment. As tests in the developer's environment are inevitably artificial. Um, it's like said here, for example, a system that is intended for use in our hospital is used in our clinical environment where other things are going on, such as patient emergencies, conversations with relatives, etc. These all affect the use of our system, but developers cannot include them in their testing environment. That's why user tests User testing is very essential um, at the environment of the user, of the stakeholders. We can hardly simulate it in the daily life. In practice, we have three different types of user testing. The first one is alpha testing. Here, users of the software work with the development team to test the software at the developer's site. The second type is beta testing. It's a release of the software is made available to users to allow them to experiment and to raise problems that they discover with the system developers. And the third type, is the acceptance testing. Customers test a system to decide whether or not it is ready to be accepted from the system developers and deployed in their customer environment, primarily for custom systems. So you see these three types of user testing, they are quite different. Um, we can identify them by the by the site where it is executed and by people who execute it. Like alpha testing, it is the users users of the software. It is the uh, users of the software work with the development team, and the site is the developer site. And for beta testing, um, here is a, 
yeah, for better testing is a uh, is for the users. Also, they discover it with the, the system. They discover it with the system developers. Mm, but here, it's not. It's no longer at the developers' side. Um, its users have can receive the release a release of the software. And then for the acceptance testing, it yeah, it is to test. It's like the final test, as we all care. Uh, it's the customers who test the system, and the site is in the customer environment. So you see, in other testing, users and the developers, they work together to test a system as it is being developed. This means that the users can identify problems and issues that are not really apparent to the development testing team. And developers can only really work from the requirements, but these often do not reflect other factors that affect the practical use of the software. And users can therefore provide information about practice that helps with the design of more realistic tests. And for other testing, it is often used when de developing software products that are sold as shrink-wrapped systems. Users of these products may be willing to get involved in the alpha testing process, as this gives them early information about new system features that can be exploited. It also reduces the risk that unanticipated changes to the software will have disruptive effects on their business. However, alpha testing may also be used when custom, when custom software is being developed. Agile methods, for example, extreme programming, advocate user involvement in the development process and that users should play a key role in designing tests for the system. So you see, for alpha testing, it is always involved by developers and customers together. And for beta testing, it takes place when an early, sometimes unfinished release of a software system is made available to customers and users for the evaluation. Beta testers may be a selected group of customers who are early adopters of the system. Alternatively, the software may be made publicly available for user for use by anyone who is interested in it. And beta testing is mostly used for software products that are used in many different environments. It's different from custom systems, which are generally used in a defined environment. For beta testing, it is impossible for product developers to know and replicate all the environments in which the software will be used. So beta testing is therefore, yeah, beta testing is essential to discover interaction problems between the software and features of the environment where it is used. Beta testing it's also a form of marketing. Customers learn about their systems and what it can do for them. Um, yeah, for beta testing, it's rather for some, yeah, for some big systems. It's not like custom systems. And the, the last type, the acceptance testing, it is an uh, inherent part of a custom systems development. It takes place after release testing. It involves a customer formally testing 
uh, yeah, it involves a customer formally testing a system to decide whether or not it should be accepted from the system developer. And acceptance implies that payment should be made for the system. Mm. Yeah. You see these three types of testing are really different. Uh, for this acceptance acceptance testing process, we have six stages. As you, uh, we have said that for this acceptance, it implies the payment. It's important. Um, yeah, it, um, it should be important. <laughs> And we have six stages in this acceptance testing process. You see here the six stages. The first one is define acceptance criteria. The second one is plan acceptance testing. The third one is derive acceptance tests. The fourth one is to run acceptance tests. Fifth one, negotiate, test the results, and the sixth one, accept or reject the system. Um, yeah, we'll talk about these six stages in detail. For the first stage, define acceptance criteria. He, here, this stage should ideally take place early in the process before the contract for the system is signed. As it's a yeah criteria of acceptance, it's like a the call between customers and developers. The, the acceptance criteria should be part of the system contract and be agreed between the customer and the developer. In practice, however, it can be difficult to define criteria so early in the process. In detail, the requirements may not be available and there may be significant requirements change during the development process, but it is uh, still better to have the definition of acceptance criteria as soon as possible as a, uh, yeah, it will facilitate the later work. And the second one, you see here after this, we get a test criteria. The second stage is the uh, is to plan acceptance testing. This involves deciding on the resources, time, and budget for acceptance testing and establishing a testing schedule. This, yeah, the acceptance test plan should also discuss the required coverage of the requirements and the order in which system features are tested. It should define risks to the testing process, such as a system crash and inadequate performance, and discuss how these risks can be uh, avoided or mitigated. And so after this stage, we get a test plan. Then we are coming to the third stage, which is the deriving of testing, uh, deriving acceptance tests. Once acceptance criteria have been established, tests have to be designed to check whether or not a system is acceptable. Acceptance, yeah, accept, uh, acceptance tests should aim to test both the functional and the non-functional characteristics. 
yeah, as we have said, functional characteristics is like is the, the we consider the system as a whole, and the, um, um, we see if the requirements can be satisfied. And non-functional characteristics as some performances of the system, and these functional and non-functional characteristics in characteristics they should provide complete coverage of the system requirements. In practice, it is difficult to establish completely objective acceptance criteria. There is often scope for argument about whether or not a test shows that a criteria has definitely been met. So here we get some tests, derived acceptance tests, and then we run these acceptance tests. The agreed acceptance tests are executed on the system. Ideally, this should take place in the actual environment where the system will be used. But this may be disruptive and impractical. So our user testing environment have to be set up to run these tests. It is difficult to automate these tests, this process as part of the, the acceptance tests may involve testing the interactions between end users and the system. Some chaining of end users may be required. After here, we get test results. And we go to the next stage, which is the negotiation of test results. It is very unlikely that all of the defined acceptance tests will pass and that there will be no problems with the system. If this is the case, then acceptance testing is complete and the system can be handled over. More commonly, usually, some problems will be discovered in this stage. And then the developer and the customer have to negotiate to decide if the system is good enough to be put into use. They must also agree on the developer's response to identify the problems. So here we negotiate the tested results. We get a testing report and we go to the last stage which is to decide whether to accept or reject the system this stage involves a meeting between the developers and the customer to decide on whether or not the system should be accepted if the system is not good enough for use then further development is required to fix the identified problems once complete the acceptance testing phase is repeated so you see, here is the process of acceptance testing. It is complicated too. Mm, yeah, here we list these six stages with words. Define acceptance criteria, plan acceptance testing, derive acceptance tests, run acceptance tests, negotiate test results, and reject or accept systems. Now we will see some relationships between agile methods and acceptance testing. In agile methods, the user or customer is part of the development team and is responsible for making decisions on the acceptability of the system. Do you remember? In agile methods, the co communication between the user and the, the developer is quite close. Um, yeah, they may even in our same site, users and developers. Let's are defined by the user or customer and are integrated with other tests in that they can they are run automatically when changes are made. And there is no separate acceptance testing process. In fact, here with agile methods such as extreme programming, acceptance testing 
uh, shares the notion that users should decide whether or not the system is acceptable. And the user is part at the user, yeah, here, the user is part of the development team and provides the system requirements instead of user stories. So the user is also responsible for defining the test, which decides whether or not the developed software supports the user story. And the tags, these tests are automated and development does not proceed until the story acceptance tests have passed. So no separate acceptance testing activity. Yeah, we have our main problem here is whether or not the embedded user is typical and can represent the interest of all system stack stakeholders. Yeah, this one is a uh, this problem. It's quite difficult and quite and difficult because different users may have different requirements, and we are, if we are not sure if the user embedded in their in this in the process can represent the, the interests of all stakeholders, then we may have problems later. Okay. This is for this part. That means we arrive at the end of our eighth chapter. In this chapter, we have said that testing can only show the presence of errors in a program. It cannot demonstrate that there are no remaining faults. Okay, here this phrase is the, yeah, we have mentioned it twice today. And in your assignment, you have this one too. And development testing is the responsibility of the software development team. A separate team should be responsible for testing our system before it is released to customers. Development testing includes unit testing in which we test individual objects and methods, component testing in which we test related groups of objects and system testing where we test partial or complete systems. You see here we talk about the three levels of granularity and, and the relationships between these three levels of granularity. Then, when we test the software, we should try to break the software by using experience and guidelines to choose types of test cases that have been effective in discovering defects in other systems. Wherever possible, we should write automated tests. The tests are embedded in a program that can be run there every time a change is made to our system. Don't forget the three parts of an automated test. And we have talked about the test first or test driven development, which is our an approach to development where tests are written before the code to be tested. We have uh, talked about the scenario testing. Uh, it involves inventing a typical usage scenario and using these to derive test cases. We have we had a very detailed example of this scenario testing. And uh, at last we have concentrated Yeah, we have concentrated on the, the acceptance testing. The acceptance testing is a user testing process where the aim is to decide if the software is good enough to be deployed and used in its operational environment. Yeah, you see, acceptance testing is, as we say, uh, it relates 
directly to the payment is important too. Mm. Yeah, here is our eighth chapter. Do you have a, do you have some questions about this part? We have finished this chapter and there's only one chapter left, the ninth chapter, software evolution. You are not involved in the class. No question? Okay, Jackie. Mm. In this case, perhaps we will stop here. And from the next class, we will begin the last chapter, Software Evolution. Okay. Okay, thank you. Is it possible to identify more scenarios out of the scenario given? Um, you talk about this one. I'm sorry. You talk about this example. Well, we are, we um for the question of Asman, uh, it's before the before Monday. Yeah, before Monday, <laughs> the assignment eleven before Monday, and for Kaya, you talk about this one, this slide. This usage scenario, you want to identify more scenarios out of the scenario given. That means you want to have more examples. Is that what you mean? I'm sorry, Kaya. Can you hear me? Use this story, usage uh, scenarios. Yeah. Um, do you remember before, I think it was in the fourth chapter, we have talked about also some scenarios, at least one scenario. Um, perhaps you can, yeah, you can search it up, look it up in the slides, in the fourth chapter for the scenario. I will see if I can find it quickly. Yeah. Mm. It's in the in the fourth chapter. I will see it here. In the fourth chapter, normally it's, um, let's say, 50. Interviews. Yeah. Oh, you, uh, yeah, here. You say, you see, we have other scenarios like this. It's the patient records it's 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 about the same the same system but we describe different usage different activities we can also i mean the chats 
Can we have more tests for this in our... Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Sure, here, uh, in this, in this one, we have gave, we have got these features. Well, we can also discover much more tested apart these one on these ones. Yeah, just like uh, in the last class when we talk about the requirements. Here, here are just some examples. We may also have other features. Is it clear? Okay. Okay, thank you, Kaya. Um, thank you for your question. Yeah, um, sure, if we can have many other tests deriving from this scenario, and, yeah, as well as uh, our example of uh, requirements-based testing. Yeah, our requirements-based testing, we had an example and uh, we can generate much more tests than that. Okay, thank you. And we don't have assignment for this class, but we had for this um, this week what we have given yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. So I'll say bye to you. Have a good time. Yeah, goodbye. See you next week. Bye.